Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me okay? Audio good? I'm assuming so. There's a lot of people here. So before I get started, I'd like to introduce Vericode as obviously one of the sponsors for today. Has anybody heard of Vericode before? Hands up, please. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Everyone's being very kind. Um, I didn't know how well we go down with hand raising. Um, I wanted to ask a little bit about how much you trust AI in general, not necessarily in the context of sci-fi and like looking into the Terminator and predicting the future around that, but specifically around the generation of application security and looking into the code which it generates for you. Not in the sense that it's doing anything malicious, but in the sense that it could be introducing any kind of security vulnerabilities inside of the code which it's generating for you. Some of the statistics which we've looked into from an efficiency point of view and the promises that AI has to give to us from a development point of view, a lot of the independent studies have reported efficiency in the 50% mark. 55% was something which GitHub posted in their recent evaluation of their efficiency of co-pilots. Has anybody had a play with GitHub Copilot at all or like ChatGPT for the sake of generating code? Uh, probably about everyone here, or if you're, if you're not playing with it, you're probably not on the tools, to be honest. Um, but yeah, AI is only getting more advanced and it's only getting more and more integral into the ways in which we work in this development world. And as part of it being more predicated in the rest of our environments, it's also becoming more and more trusted and it's also becoming more and more reliable. The problem is with that is that comes from a functionality point of view and from an integration point of view, the security side of things is lagging behind quite a lot. This is down to how it's being trained as learning language models. So effectively, it's being trained upon open source code and code which we provided to it through the use of our data, which we've subscribed to. So for example, with Copilot, it has the ability to learn off of the code which we are providing it. So it will learn off of the code which we've got in house. Um, another quick question, who here thinks that their code or the code which their company produces is completely perfect from a security point of view? I was not expecting hands at this point. So the next question is, would anybody who raised their hand please come up on stage and tell me why? No, that's a joke, obviously. Some of the research that um, we did found that about 40% of AI um, code-generated lines contain some kind of security flaw inside of them. And that's obviously a statistic which is echoed around just roughly how often we end up with vulnerabilities inside of the code which we produce anyway. At a rough estimate, let's say about 80% of the code that is inside of open source systems as well as the code which we've got on enterprise systems from the statistics that we've gathered, about 80% of that has some kind of critical security flaw inside of it. That's just code which exists within inside of the, the application. It's not necessarily something that's been exploited or has a major risk underlying it, but we know that from the way which the code has been constructed, there is a potential security flaw inside of that. Sounds uh, quite severe, but obviously this is um, a hypothetical in like a, a white box testing scenario rather than a black box testing. The problem is with that is obviously once you start having AI in the mix which learns off of this code base, you end up with a system which will perpetually generate more and more code which we would then need to secure over time. The problem is, is that when we look at how long it takes to remediate security flaws in today's programming world, this is some statistics that we gathered over the last year, it takes about a year for us to remediate about 60% of the vulnerabilities inside of our code base, meaning that after a year's time, 40% on average of all of the code flaws that we have as part from a security point of view is still inside of our code base today. And that's without AI getting involved at all. Then when we start taking into the consideration that if we have some kind of efficiency boost on top of that and end up producing 50% more code, which we know contains a roughly similar level of vulnerabilities inside of them, we're gonna end up in a situation where this vulnerability cascade will only keep scaling out away from us. One of the things that we're suggesting internally is obviously we need to be more due diligence around providing security training, enablement, and well as doing security testing as part of this overall process. And the other thing that we're suggesting doing is fighting fire with fire going forward. So I'm not sure how visible this is coming out on the screen, but effectively what we've designed is an AI tool which is looking at um, actually fixing these security flaws trained from a security database and data set. Rather than training it upon any kind of open source programming languages or any languages which you've got or code internally, what we're doing is we're training it upon an entirely internally curated and security trusted um, database. 
and then providing supported learning through that process in order to provide scanning and remediation capabilities with inside of a single uh, framework. This can all be integrated inside of an IDE, so this uses, in this example, Visual Studio Code. So the idea behind this is that as your developers are working on their code, and as you are all like using AI and Copilot and the, all the rest of that to generate more code and get more done in your working day, adding an extra layer of that security testing at the point of doing this coding and at the point of pushing a release, you can effectively understand where your security flaws are and then try to remediate them in a quicker, more timely fashion. The idea behind this is that rather than obviously training on open source packages where we know that it could be potentially compromised, you're gonna end up in a situation where maybe the code doesn't work 100% of the time, as obviously no AI is perfect at the moment, especially from a logistics point of view. But what this will enable you to do is effectively produce code which you know doesn't have a security flaw as part of this uh, process. And then the other component to this is that it's not actually learning upon the language which you're, um, or the code which you're providing to it. So you're not gonna end up with an issue regarding legal um, claim to that kind of code base. So it's all proprietary inside of your own uh, environments. The idea behind this, scaling forward, is that we will be able to effectively reduce uh, vulnerability time and the management period for it takes to actually maintain a vulnerability down by a significant margin. Obviously, when we look at the long-term scale of all of these vulnerabilities, if you end up with a vulnerability backlog of a significant amount which you can't address on your day-to-day -day basis, what will typically happen is those will get added to a backlog, they will have to be triaged, administrated, do research before ultimately push will be changed to fix, and that ends up being a cycle in the region of a couple of weeks, if not months. If you can fix something on the fly as it's going in or never introduce a vulnerability in the first place, obviously there's time to resolve this. Scales down in a matter of minutes and then you will have to do your due diligence from a human point of view to validate what's actually going on in there, whether it still works and then do progression testing or unit testing on that code to make sure it still runs the way it is intended. What this looks like on scale, um, I'm not sure how visible this is again, on the bottom part here, is this is what it's meant to look like from a, uh, a drawdown over time without having a solution in place where vulnerabilities keep adding up time and time again, especially when you consider adding on extra code uh, being deployed in this case. And then what this will end up looking like is a longer period of time where you have more vulnerabilities being introduced versus the inverse being able to address them uh, a shorter period of time. That was a very quick overview in terms of what we're offering to market at the moment. The closing thoughts around this in terms of how this will look forward going inside of the, the marketplace and how we develop as a, as a community is the first point being that at the end of the day, the only real defense we have against this kind of thing is the due diligence that we're doing as the people maintaining this code base, being able to effectively enable all of the people who are working on it from a security point of view to make sure that what we're introducing is secure from the very beginning. And then what we're going to need to be doing is introducing more and more security tooling in over time and in uh, regulated places to make sure that this is gonna be scalable going forward and it's not gonna be a problem which is gonna cascade going further. And then the other point of view is that if we can get to a happy place where we've introduced a tool where we can automatically produce code as well as remediate it and make sure that we are producing the best quality that we can, and then we can move to a place where we're not just scaling down development time but then redistributing development time into more logistical and logic-based and design-based problems which we're encountering on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you very much for listening.